Options contracts are one of the most powerful tools an investor can use to earn money and achieve an outstanding ROI. But trading options does not come without risk. As long-term value investors, we follow a strict set of guidelines that have helped us successfully use options trading to earn a 40% return on our portfolio last year while reducing our overall risk. In this video, we will share with you the methods that we used, which work extremely well in times of high volatility. And if 2021 is anything like 2020 when it comes to the markets, we believe that these strategies will continue to be very successful. So let's dive in. Hi everyone, I'm Sam. And I'm Chris. Thanks for tuning into our channel where we explore achieving wealth and financial freedom through a three-part strategy. Earn more, spend less, and invest the rest. Before we dive into the very juicy topic of today's video, we want to remind you that Chris and I are not licensed financial advisors. Anything that we discuss in this video is our opinion based on personal experience and should not be taken as legal or financial advice. All right, let's dig in. When you think of options trading, what are some of the words that come to your mind? Scary, complicated, difficult to understand, a way to get rich quick? Once we understood what options were and began using them with the techniques we're about to describe in this video, it was a real game changer for us. That's why we want to demystify options so that you can understand them and use them to your advantage. Something important for you to know about us is that we have very audacious financial goals. At the same time, we are extremely risk adverse. We are the kind of people that hate losing more than we love winning, and this mentality fuels our personal investment strategy. We are always looking for ways that we can grow our wealth as much as possible, as quickly as possible, while still protecting our hard earned money. We have many rules that we follow when it comes to investing, and the number one most important rule is that we do not buy an investment unless we can get it at a price that is discounted compared to its fair value. This is where options come in. If you watched our recent video where we discuss our opinion on if a market crash will happen in 2021, you will know that we believe the market is currently extremely overvalued and that we have felt this way for a while. In 2020, even though there was a drop in March, people were still investing like the wind was at their back, taking more risk and buying stocks at what we consider to be very high prices. This is because they were doing the buy and hope method where it doesn't really matter what you pay for a share today because in the future, somebody is going to be willing to pay more for that same share. Now, this technique does not work for us at all. It breaks all of our rules and it is way too risky. So you see, one of the problems with being a value investor is that we're often faced with investments that we consider to be overpriced. And this forces us to wait in cash for long periods of time. However, by using options, we're able to put this cash to work and earn our substantial returns. In 2020, using the techniques we're gonna describe in this video, we were able to achieve a 40% return on the money we invested. There are hundreds of different strategies when it comes to trading options. Some of them even have various sex and names. Yeah, like the bull put spread, the iron condor, or the long butterfly. But in our experience, the simple techniques have yielded the best results. And that's why for the remainder of this video, we are going to focus on the two methods that we personally use. So these are the short put and the short call. Before we move forward, we need to define some key terms to make sure that we are all on the same page. To begin, an options contract is an agreement between two parties to facilitate a potential transaction on the underlying security at a preset price, referred to as the strike price, prior to the expiration date. The two types of contracts are put and call options, both of which can be purchased to speculate on the direction of a stock or stock indices or sold to generate income. For stock options, a single contract covers 100 shares of the underlying stock. Phew, that was a mouthful. Why don't we break this down into more digestible pieces? An option contract is an agreement between two parties to facilitate a potential transaction on the underlying security. Okay, in this case, the words underlying security mean a stock. So this is an agreement between two different people. The agreement is about a specific stock and it sets the terms on how the two people are going to behave if certain conditions occur. An option is also called a derivative because it derives its value from the underlying security. 
at a preset price referred to as the strike price. The strike price is a specific amount of money agreed to by both parties that will trigger a transaction to take place. It's also called the exercise price because in legal terms, the word exercise means to put into action. So for example, you may have heard the expression, I'm going to exercise my First Amendment right to free speech. It's used the same way in this situation. From the perspective of the option seller, the strike price of a call option is the price that you agree to sell your stock at. The strike price of a put option is the price that you agree to buy a stock at. Prior to the expiration date. The expiration date indicates the time limit for which the contract is valid. Once the expiration date approaches, the contract is either exercised or it expires. For the seller, if the contract is exercised, that means that you will either buy or sell the stock at the agreed strike price. If the contract expires, then you will keep the premium and no stock will be exchanged. The two types of contracts are put and call options. From the perspective of an option seller, a put option obligates you to buy a stock at the agreed strike price. A call option obligates you to sell your stock at the agreed strike price. The way that I remember this terminology was taught to me by Phil Town in his book Rule One, and it is as simple as this. Shares are put to you and they are called away from you. Both option types can be purchased to speculate on the direction of stocks or sold to generate income. We do not use options to speculate, but rather to enter or exit positions in companies that we love. And in doing so, it helps us to improve our overall return, generate monthly, sometimes weekly cash flow, de-risk our portfolio, and it enables us to participate in stocks that we would consider to be overpriced. We only use options on companies that we either already own or that we want to own in the future. When we sell put options, it's on companies that meet our investment criteria. That means we understand the business. The business has a durable competitive advantage. It has honest and capable management, and we understand what is the fair value to pay for that company. It's important to note that we only sell cash secured puts. This means that we want to buy the company at the agreed strike price and we have the money in our account to do so. We also only sell covered calls. This means that we own at least 100 shares of this company and we're happy to sell it at the agreed strike price. You may have heard about naked puts and calls from other sources, but we will not be discussing them in this video because we do not practice them. For stock options, a single contract contains 100 shares of the underlying stock. This may impact the types of companies that you are able to sell options contracts on. For example, if you sell a put option on a company with a strike price of $10 and that company's shares trade for $10 at any time during the validity of your contract, you will be obligated to spend $1,000. So if you only have $900 in your account, you should not enter that contract. On the flip side, if you sell a covered call, that means you're obligated to sell 100 shares of a certain stock on the expiration date. So if you don't own 100 shares of that stock, you shouldn't be selling calls. Now that we're all on the same page with our terminology, let's see what this actually looks like in the real world. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you my screen and walk through the current options chain for Apple. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over to our Think or Swim platform. This is the platform that our brokerage account, TD Ameritrade, uses. Although each platform has its own nuances, for the most part, the nuts and bolts are the same. So what I'm discussing should transfer over whether you're using Interactive Brokers, Robinhood, or another brokerage account. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I go to Apple's option chain. So I'll type in Apple's ticker and hit enter. Okay, what you're seeing now is the current option chain for Apple in the various expiration dates. Apple is a company that has weekly options. Most companies have at least monthly options, but there are a few that don't have options associated with their stock. Let's take a look at the next monthly option. This is the options expiring on the 19th of February, so we're 34 days from expiration. If we open the tab, what you'll notice is you'll notice the call options are on the left-hand side, the put options are on the right-hand side, and the strike prices go right down the middle. 
Now you'll notice that there is a change in color right here, and that signifies the current price of Apple stock. The current price of Apple stock is $127.14. So that occurs between the $130 and the $125 strike price. As an example, let's assume that we have calculated the intrinsic value of Apple and have decided that we are willing to pay $120 for Apple stock. Please note that this is not a recommendation by us to buy Apple stock. It is our opinion that at its current valuations, Apple is way overpriced. Anyways, back to our example. Looking at the option chain and going down to the $120 strike price, we see that somebody is willing to pay us $3.45 for us to sell our obligation to buy Apple at $120 for the next 34 days. Remember, if Apple stays above $120 for the next 34 days, we keep the $3.45 and the option buyer keeps their stock. Also remember, this is on 100 shares, so we would collect $3.45 per share or $345, and we're obligated to buy Apple at $120 per share or $12,000 of Apple stock. Okay, so let's briefly discuss some of the numbers behind this trade. We are obligating ourselves to buy 100 shares of Apple for $120 per share. But for this obligation, we receive $3.45 per share. This means that our risk capital is $120 minus the $3.45 or $116.55. Our return on that trade is the premium we collect divided by our risk capital. So that's $3.45 divided by $116.55 which equals a 2.96% return for the 34 day period. That's right, that's a 2.69% return over the next 34 days. To annualize this return, we calculate how many times a year we can do this trade. So that's 365 days divided by the 34 days till expiration times the 2.96% return. So that equals a 31.8% return. Not a bad return for such a conservative approach. But remember, if we could put the stock at $120, we are happy because we bought a great company at the price we wanted and we got paid to do so. Okay, so let's take a look at the call side. This actually applies more to Sam and my situation because we took a position in Apple back in March when it traded around $55 per share. As Apple stock appreciated, we decided to get out and we recently sold call options and got paid to sell our stock at prices we couldn't refuse. Looking at the current options chain, if you owned a position in Apple and were thinking about getting out, you could go to the $135 strike price, sell a call, and somebody would be willing to pay you $3.45 for your obligation to sell them your stock at $135 for the next 34 days. If the stock didn't reach $135, you keep your stock and the premium. Not bad, is it? Remember, we are not recommending that you buy or sell Apple stock, but rather we just want to show you how you can use options to enter and exit positions. When used correctly, they are fantastic for improving overall returns. They produce monthly and sometimes weekly cash flow. They're excellent in getting your money off the table and back in your pocket, which will de-risk your investments and they allow you to make money on stocks that you consider to be overpriced. Now that we've walked you through that example, there are still a few very important things that you need to understand when it comes to options trading. Firstly, why would someone be willing to pay you a premium? Well, there are many different investing strategies in the stock market, and one thing you can be sure of is that whatever viewpoint you have, there's lots and lots of people out there with the complete opposite viewpoint. So that difference of opinion is what creates a market for options trading. What influences the amount of premium that you get paid? Well, this is the probability or the likelihood that that option contract will actually be exercised. So this is the proximity of the market to the strike price and the volatility that's currently in the market. Okay, let's take the example if you're going to buy flood insurance for your house. And we're both from Florida, so that's a place that's prone to hurricanes. Obviously, if you're living on the coast, so a closer proximity to the influence of hurricanes, you're gonna pay more flood insurance. Also, if, it's, if you're trying to buy a uh, insurance policy for the next month and it's currently hurricane season, 
and there's a lot of storms brewing in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, then that's, that kind of represents the volatility and you're going to pay more for that insurance policy. Okay, that makes it a bit more simple to understand. Is what we're doing the same thing as day trading? No, day trading is speculating on a stock move. What we're doing is we're putting in time and effort to understand the value of a business and then we're using options trading to enter and exit positions in long-term investments. When most people hear options, they think day trading. But day trading is something that is incredibly difficult to be successful over the long term because it requires you to get three things right to be successful. That is, it requires you to get the direction of the move right, it requires you to get the magnitude of the move right, and it requires you to get the timing of the move right. As long-term investors, all we're required to do really is to get the direction of the move right to be successful over the long term. So we're trying to build a portfolio of stocks that over the next 10 or 20 years will go up. And by doing this, over the long term, we will be very successful. Finally, what are the risks that we need to be aware of? Okay, well, let's start with the put option first. Okay, so there is both downside and upside risk. So the downside risk is very similar to if you were just going to buy the company outright at your strike price. In fact, it's a little bit reduced because you're collecting a premium to buy it at that strike price. The upside risk is that you're not actually guaranteed to get put that stock. So if the stock shoots straight up and never hits your strike price, you're going to miss on the upside return. Okay, so in other words, let's take a share that we want to buy and we've identified $100 as our strike price. If that stock shoots all the way up to $200, we have missed that $100 of potential earnings that we could have received. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and going the opposite way, if the stock price drops significantly, well, that's never a good thing for us when we're investing. So it's essentially the same as if we were to buy it without using the options, except it's a little bit less risky because we've collected a premium. That's right. And the reason we, or the way we mitigate that is we've put in time and effort. We understand the value of the business and we know that it's worth far more than whatever price we're willing to pay for it now. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the call option risks. So, when you sell a call option, you're obligated to sell the stock at a certain price. Obviously, there's a downside risk and an upside risk because you could be owning a stock that could go down, could lose value. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very similar to if you were owning the stock outright. Now, the upside risk would be if the stock price somehow shoots up far in excess of where your strike price is, you're going to miss the upside between wherever the market is currently and your strike price. So let's say that you own a stock that's currently trading at $95 and you sell a $100 call option on it. So that, that obligates you to sell that stock at $100. Well, if that stock somehow be before expiration date shoots to $200, you're going to miss out on all that, uh, that value between the strike price and the current market. Makes sense. In conclusion, options are amazing, and if you know how to use them, that makes you pretty cool. And I own over 10,000 comic books and was vice captain of my junior high chess team, so I know cool. But in all seriousness, options are something that we've been using successfully over 10 years to really propel our investment results. When used correctly, they can really improve your overall returns, de-risk your portfolio, produce monthly, sometimes weekly cash flow, and allow you to participate in stocks that we consider overpriced. Chris and I have mentioned a few times in this video that we use these techniques to achieve a 40% return on the money we invested last year. So in an upcoming video, we are going to open our brokerage account and break down step by step how we were able to create a free lottery ticket on one of the companies that we currently own. Yeah, this means using call options, put options, and dividends to completely remove 100% of our invested capital and still create a position. So stay tuned for that video. All right, guys, we hope that you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to let us know by liking and subscribing to our channel. As always, we welcome your comments in the feedback. Let us know what kind of videos you would like to see from us in the future. Remember, earn more, spend less, and invest the rest, and we'll see you next time.